Hey Aries, this is Michael with your October 2022 predictions. I do hope that this video finds you well and in good spirits. If you're brand new in my channel, welcome. My name is Michael. I utilize tarot and astrology each month to figure out what we have in store for you in the month ahead. I am so excited to get into your reading today, Aries. We have so much going on in the month of October. We have your ruling planet going retrograde at the end of the month. Mars is going retrograde in Gemini. We also have three retrograde planets going direct, Mercury, Pluto, and Saturn. And finally, we even have a solar eclipse on the 25th. This is a new moon eclipse in the sign of Scorpio. So there's just so much that is going on. And I'm going to kind of talk more about the astrology as I'm shuffling the cards here because I think it's really important to pay attention to this month. We are very much in a month of shifting and kind of changing priorities. There's also quite a bit of focus on relationships for you this month. Um, that could be something that's really coming up. Interesting that we have the moon and the five of pentacles coming up from the past here. The energy I'm actually getting right away is very specific, and I don't expect it will apply to all of you, but I feel like a good portion of you watching this video have been in a situation where I almost feel like there was an ex or a person from the past who ended up being in a new relationship, especially looking at that five of pentacles here, and the moon is you feeling a lot of intense emotions around that. I don't think it has to be that way. For some of you, this energy could also just be um, feeling like left out in the cold. Feeling left behind is a very interesting theme. And with Mercury retrograde in the sign of Virgo, Mercury was actually retrograde in Libra, it might have felt like you felt left behind relative to your relationships. Maybe someone got married or started a committed relationship, or maybe you felt like your relationship wasn't as progressed as you thought it was if you are in a relationship. Um, or maybe there's miscommunications and you're feeling very much isolated in this energy, if that's the case. And then when Virgo or when Mercury went retrograde in Virgo in September, it really could have also brought a lot of focus on work and routines. And I think you were just really, really hard on yourself in September. Aries, or you've been very hard on yourself. Let's not necessarily put a time limit on it because this is energy just coming from the past. But when I'm thinking about the astrology, September was definitely rough for a lot of people. And, and I think there was just this feeling of being behind or being overwhelmed or overextended. That seemed very recurrent for a lot of people. Um, let's see what else we have for you. We have the Five of Wands. So there might have been some sort of conflict. Um, there might have been some sort of competition. Really a struggle of ego. Because when I'm looking at this couple, they're not really fighting over anything important. They're fighting over how to pack this car here, right? And so it's almost like the energy that you've been learning about this month is really picking and choosing your battles. Is it really worth getting worked up about to fight over little things? I feel like a lot of you have been in, in kind of a, a sensitive place. And if you have felt conflict or tension with another person, I feel like it's actually related to this Five of Pentacles. I'm not going to lie. Five of Pentacles with the moon. This sort of insecurity. And we have two fives next to each other. So we have five, five. You might be seeing repeating fives a lot. Um, that could just be confirmation that this video is for you. Wow. And the five of cups. <laughs> you are very in your feelings this month. Um, so we have three fives, five, five, five. You are in the midst of a very big change. Aries. There's a lot that is shifting this month and you might be feeling very emotional. We do actually have Jupiter in your sign giving you a lot of energy, a lot of expansion, and also Venus and Libra forming an opposition. Um, this is actually most at its peak on October 1st, but I think there's just this really intense energy that you're feeling. 
And it's interesting because I feel like you're in a very good spot to manifest attention or relationships or just to get noticed. But when I'm actually looking at this group, it feels like there's a lot of loss or there's a lot of grief. And there's like this cloud of grief I am seeing clairvoyantly kind of in your aura, this sort of dark gray that is preventing love from coming into your life, that is preventing you from manifesting the things that you want. We do also have a full moon in your sign on the 9th. And that could really be... Um, that could really just be this period of heightened emotions for you. And I feel like... Even if the emotions are very strong for you, Aries, it's almost like you turning a new leaf. Because we have 555. There is a big change that's about to happen in your life. We have the Knight of Wands. Yeah, you're making some changes. You're making some changes. And that might also be involving career. I'm getting a potential change in career or relocating for a job that is something that is possible for some of you, um, especially when Pluto goes direct in Capricorn on October 8th. Pluto was retrograde since April, and so it's kind of important to remember the themes that have been coming up for you since April of this year all the way until this month in October. And very often, it's right around the periods when it stations, either direct or retrograde, that we really notice the influence of these outer planets and their retrograde cycles. So don't be surprised if there's a lot that is shifting. And again, we have an eclipse at the end of the month. We haven't even gotten into that yet, but there will be a lot of change and transformation that can come from that. Um, what else do we have? I, I feel like because there's so much focus on... Libra energy because we are in Libra season. I really do feel like there's a lot of focus on wanting partnership and, and wanting to relate or connect with people. And you either are in a relationship and you're just not connecting with this person very well, or you're just longing for a connection. Or you're wanting to heal something. Show us clearly, please. That's too many. What are the messages for Aries? Show us clearly, please. The tower. Okay, let's crack into this because there is a really big change that you are going through, Aries. And it feels like... I'm getting a very specific story here. I'm getting this energy or this pattern for you where you have been sticking with the situation. This could be a job, this could be a relationship, whatever it is that you've been sticking to because you're afraid to let it go, because you're afraid of the shame or the grief or the guilt or the feelings of unworthiness that might come from letting something go or failing at something. I'm going to be honest, it feels like that's going to fall away from you. And that might not even necessarily happen this month because the tower is kind of looking ahead here. But looking at the solar eclipse in Scorpio on the 25th, I really do feel like you're letting some things go. And it's a, it's a time to be transformed. It is a time to start over. And it's never too late to start over. I feel like some of you have been afraid to embark on a new journey and that's actually kind of the challenge that's the opportunity with the knight of wands show us a little more let's let's explore the tower here the hierophant five again this is the fifth major arcana and this is also taurus energy
I feel like spirituality is really important for you right now. I feel like I'm connecting with a group that's been out of touch with their spiritual practice or their spiritual connection for some time. And if that doesn't resonate, then maybe this isn't your reading. Again, you're welcome to check your moon or rising sign videos. I feel like there's also a mentor. There's someone you're supposed to be talking to or something you're supposed to be learning right now. The Hanged Man. Honestly, what this is reminding me of Another pretty important thing happening in October, we have Jupiter going back into the sign of Pisces. Jupiter was in your sign, and it might feel like your luck has almost shifted in a negative way, but I don't think that's actually true. Because the things that are being lost, the things that aren't working out, weren't actually meant for you. And it's kind of encouraging you to start over I feel like some of you are keeping yourself stuck in a situation. You need to gain a new perspective before you can move forward. And it's almost like you're, you're repeating some sort of cycle here as well. And you, you thought it was different this time. You thought the cycle was different this time. And it was. Six of Cups. Yeah, there's healing. There's deep healing coming on. Is there anything else for Aries? What, what can we focus on here? Ten of Wands. Some of you have just been carrying too many burdens. You've been trying to make things work that aren't aligned for you anymore. There's a really big purging this month. And I mean, with the astrology, there's just so many big areas of your life that are being highlighted right now because we have your career and your, your partnerships that are very much in the limelight this month and some sort of conflict there. This could also be something that is happening to your partner, something in their workplace situation or some sort of, of leveling in their life. Or maybe this is just someone who's very close to you. What else do we have for Aries? Show us clearly. We have your card, we have the Emperor. And two nines, nine of wands and nine of cups coming out together. So a lot of repeating numbers in this reading. We have five, five, five plus five with the hierophant. We have nine, nine. Um, and interesting how they come out together because it's like you've been so burnt out. I feel like you just really need to take care of yourselves. I feel like some of you have been so focused on a specific outcome because you believe that's the only way that you can be happy like i can only be happy if i get this raise i can only be happy if i um i don't know if i get this end up in this specific relationship or, or something like that but again i feel like you've been burdening yourself with something that isn't actually aligned for you and i think you really do need to be open to that the universe is trying to give you blessings um, blessings that you aren't open to receiving because when we're in resistance, when we're so fixed on just one possibility, our whole body tightens. And when our body is tight, we can use that as a barometer to determine that we are restricting our energy flow. And so really check in with your body. I do actually feel like some of you might have even sustained some sort of injury or strain or you're just very fatigued because we do have the Ten of Wands and the Nine of Wands and even the Knight of Wands. All of these cards can kind of indicate 
um, overextending yourself, burning yourself out, straining yourself in some way. And I could even see that with the tower and the hanged man um, and, and the six of cups kind of coming out here too. There was a lot of cards that really felt like healing. And so if you feel like you're being slowed down, especially with Mars going retrograde on the 30th this month, this is more into November, but Mars is in its pre-shadow phase through October. And this basically means that before Mars starts to move backwards through the Zodiac, it is slowing down and the energy is grading in some way. I'm not going to lie. And it might feel like there's just something in your life or things in your life that are falling apart that are making it so you have to just sit with yourself and meditate. I really want you to meditate though because Jupiter going into Pisces is going to give you luck and blessings if you align with your spirit, if you listen to your intuition and you really take the time to introspect, meditate and reflect, start journaling, start doing the things that are, are really helpful for you. I'm looking at the hanged man and I feel like a lot of you have just been addicted to your phones or addicted to technology and I'm getting this sense that whatever addictions you've had or whatever form of escapism you've been engaging with, it's no longer working for you with Jupiter in the 12th house. And now, or with Jupiter in Pisces, your subconscious, which also pertains to addictions and, and the ways that you may sabotage yourself. So I feel like there's no more distracting yourself. And there, there's almost this come to Jesus moment <laughs> that I'm kind of getting for you, Aries, where it's like, you can't run from the truth forever, especially with the tower. This is very scorpionic energy. Um, and we do have, again, a new moon solar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio on the 25th. We enter Scorpio season on the 23rd. Um, and that's the same exact day that Saturn goes direct in the sign of Aquarius. And so you might feel like there's a lot of burden that you're carrying yourself. And I think at the core of that, it comes from not feeling worthy enough, unless you are breaking your back for other people. Let's pull some animal cards here, and I'll pull some oracle cards too. Um, actually... Okay, I'm going to pull an animal card, and then I want to pull a color healing card for you as well, Aries, because I do feel like this energy is a bit intense, and I want to give you something to work with. Um, these animal cards are also kind of an energy for you to embody or for you to channel. That's very much how I use them in these readings. We have crocodile, waiting, rejuvenating. When we think of crocodile, we think of waiting for something to come to you. You can't force things. You have to conserve your energy, especially with crocodile being a reptile. Um, they are warm-blooded, so they have to be very conservative with their energy use. And I believe crocodiles can even go months without eating. Their metabolisms are so slow. So if it feels like you're stuck, it's not going to be forever. You will survive this, um, but you are being asked to wait. You are being asked to slow down and to kind of like observe. What else do we have for Aries? We have the mouse. There's this little anxious part of you. <laughs> um, there is this anxiety and that might be part of this controlling energy or this nitpicky energy. And if you do have a very active mind, it's important that you're putting this to use in productive ways. And that means getting off of your phone, probably. Uh, that also means not texting or emailing or, or staying in contact with people who are holding your energy down. And it almost feels like there's been a lot of drama with the people in your life too. Um, I'm kind of getting that with fire ants at the bottom of the deck here, actually. But I, I feel like 
it's really important that you dedicate your energy into something productive or something creative, something that requires an exacting eye, something that can distract you, but that will be ultimately productive to you. And the hummingbird, here we go. Finding the sources of sweetness, coming back to the things that give you life and energy. And if it feels like you're losing a lot of things this month, hummingbird is always about traveling light and lightening our load, lightening our energy. Hummingbird is a very high vibrational energy. It's a very spiritual and bright energy. And with this, I am also getting like astral travel with hummingbird or like going on trips. There could be something about connecting to astral travel or trips or dream work. Um, but I, I feel like with this hummingbird energy, it really is just finding the sweetness in the little things in life, maybe starting a gratitude journal or writing in a gratitude journal, doing little things that can help bring your energy back because in order to maintain this high energy, this high frequency, hummingbirds do need to have a very high sugar diet, a very sweet diet full of nectar. And so you need to find this nectar. You need to find this font of energy or fonts of energy for you this month. Let's pull a color healing card for you, Aries. What is the healing color? What is the healing frequency for Aries? And you are welcome to use this color in whatever way you feel guided to. I will just read this from the book. It does offer a guided meditation. Um, so that can be very helpful. Uh, but you're welcome to use these colors or connect with these colors in any way that makes sense to your intuition. So show me clearly, please. These cards are also really hard to shuffle. So give me a moment. And you can also find all of these decks that I am using in these readings. I've been using the uh, Modern Love Tarot with the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit deck, and we are now shuffling from the Secret Language of Colors. Show us clearly, please. What is the healing frequency for Aries? We have Amber. Awaken your creativity. Okay. Amber is a fantastic color for increasing your creativity and strengthening your manifestation abilities. Interesting. It generates deeper bonds and relationships and teaches you how to give and receive affection. Warmth, optimism, courage, and spontaneity are among Amber's gifts. Wear Amber to awaken your creative talents and abilities. Hold a piece of Amber or wear an Amber pendant to remind you of your fun, creative, and uninhibited self. Think of five adventurous things you would love to do. Pick the one that appeals you to the most and do it today. This could be singing, dancing, painting, writing, or creating something. Give yourself permission to be playful, childlike, and joyous. So this really does remind me of that hummingbird energy we were just talking about. Doing the things that really give you kind of the simple joy or pleasure. The things that you do simply for the way that it makes you feel. Really connect with these things. Interesting how it said like write out five adventures or five things you want to do and pick one. It, that's really funny how this number five keeps coming up. So pay attention to fives and also nines. Um, I kind of want to pull one more healing color for you two, actually. What is the healing color for Aries? Is there any other healing colors for Aries? 
Any other healing colors for Aries? Huh, interesting. We have white, which is lighten up. And that is also something I was just saying with the hummingbird, needing to lighten your energy, needing to let things go. And really connecting with white light this month, especially if it's very intense, especially if you feel this sort of tower moment, you feel like things are just falling down, you are burning things down to the foundation and starting all over again, um, this white card is going to be especially helpful for you. White heals your body as a whole, clearing toxicity and assisting with purification. White also enhances clarity and understanding and can be very helpful in healing skin problems. Bringing peace and comfort at the highest level, white represents integrity, light, holiness, truth, and surrender. Lighten up with white. This feeling of lightness is a magnificent experience. It encompasses innocence, purity, and joy. White brings this faith that you are completely loved, taken care of, and supported. Close your eyes and imagine that you are standing on the biggest, most magnificent white crystal mountain. Inhale deeply, allowing the clear white light emanating from this mountain to purify, energize, and enlighten you. Visualize yourself letting go of all the unnecessary baggage that you have dragged up the mountain with you. How does it feel to be free of this baggage? Experience the ease in your body and soul as you look out from the mountain. Focus on circulating white light from the tips of your toes through your whole body. Feel your body softening and lightening up even more. You are getting ready to soar. Give yourself permission to soar. So, again, just kind of repeating what we've already covered here. Pay attention to your body. Lighten the load in your body as well as in your heart and soul. I feel like there is a lot of things that you are shedding this month, but I actually get the feeling by the end of this month, there's this opportunity for you to really feel the lightness and to feel free. And I almost get the sense some of you are going to be traveling or going on some sort of adventure that you wouldn't have been able to do before because now you have more free time or you have more flexibility with something. So kind of look for the silver lining in that. Anyways, those are all the messages I am getting for you right now, Aries. I hope that this was helpful. I apologize it was a bit heavy, but hopefully these color healing cards and these oracle cards helped give you something to do to work with these energy, gave you some tools here. I do also have links in the description box down below for distance Reiki and personal readings. Maybe we can figure out some stuff together one-on-one. -on -one. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care, Aries. I'm sending you all my love and blessings your way, and I'm wishing you a happy October.